And welcome everybody to another edition of Top Sock. I'm Jake Donnelly and Top Sock is presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Greenlight Channel 2. A full moon, a black cat, an ejection, oh my. The game that the Tobs played right before the All-Star break in Petersburg was a wild one and then some. It really did not start off well for the Tobs as they found themselves down 7 to nothing at one point and then the Tobs were able to score two runs on a couple of doubles in the top of the fourth inning and the game was a 7-2 to two game. Then the Generals came back and they scored one, making it 8-2. to two. Then the Tobs stormed back for six runs. That's right, six runs out of the Tobs. Zach Callahan with a big two-run, two-out double. And all eight of the first eight runs that the Tobs scored were all with two outs. So this game, absolutely wild. The Tobs came back from a 7-0 deficit, an 8-2 deficit, and things were rolling for the Tobs. Daniel Batts, the reliever for the Tobs, was out on the mound, and he pitched three scoreless innings. But at the end of scoreless inning number two, out of the bullpen for Daniel Batts, he struck out the batter with a curveball. May have been a little bit low, but it was called for strike three. So he walks off the mound and he gives a fist pump. And he is really excited. And what does he see? Out of the corner of his eye, a black cat comes out of nowhere, runs onto the field, runs across Daniel Batts' path. So everybody is thinking that that's not going to be good luck. He then jolts in front of the Tobbs dugout, scales the dugout fence, jumps up and jumps out of the ballpark. And that kind of brought a little bit of levity to the game in an 8-8 eight eight ball game that started to get really tense. And they always say that black cats, when they cross your path, it's bad luck. Somebody was just, I was just waiting to see who that bad luck would befall. And it ended up being the Tobbs, but not in the way that you would expect. Zach Callahan led off the inning for the Tobbs. He had already driven in four runs, a single and a double. In both of those at-bats, he drove in four. He leads off the top of the eighth inning with a ground ball up the middle. The second baseman for the general circles around the ball, throws on the run, and Callahan is safe by about a quarter of a step. Well, except if you're the field umpire, he's the only one that thought that Callahan was out. So, bam, Callahan gets called out, and Justin Hay, the head coach of the Wilson Tobbs, comes out and argues the play a little bit. It's just your average, you know, argument between a manager and an umpire. And then he returns. Then something was said from the Tobbs dugout, and boom, umpire throws out a top. Mm -hmm. um, wh which top was thrown out? Oh, no, the umpire didn't know which top that he had thrown out, so... Hey, the head coach of the Tops had to explain it to the team that, you know what, guys, one of you has to get thrown out of this game because somebody said something that they shouldn't have said, and therefore a top has to go. Okay, so Michael Belcher, the starting pitcher in the game who went just three innings, ends up taking the old heave-ho. It's the first ejection of his life. So everything's fine until, for some reason, because Justin Hay didn't really say anything, he ends up getting tossed out of the game, and then... Fireworks, And I mean, Coach Hay got his two, three, four, and five cents in on this argument. The Tobbs, though, took a eight, uh, took a 10 to eight lead on back to back, and then there was an out, and then another double in the eighth inning, taking a 10 to eight lead. That inning was started off by Douglas Ard, who went two for five in the game with a run scored, the run scored being the game winning run because Chris Williams was sent out for the ninth inning. And he did what he always does. In six opportunities, he has six saves now on the season. He has yet to allow an earned run in his role as a closer for the Tops. So the Tops winning a wild one in Petersburg, 10 to 8. They come back from initially down seven runs. They end up scoring six runs in one inning to turn an 8 to 2 deficit into an 8 to 8 ball game. And they now stand at 18 and 18 on the season. The Tops really looking for some consistency. They're trying to use all the fresh faces that they are getting in the last couple of weeks. Zach Callahan kind of gave a little bit of a jolt to the team. Douglas Ard with some very good work in that game against Petersburg, both behind the plate and at the dish. As I mentioned, he went two for five and scored the game inning run, leading off the eighth inning with a double. So Douglas Ard is going to be on this edition of Tobstock, and our head coach, Justin Hay, will be on after this short break. Tobstock is presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Greenlight Channel 2. 
And welcome back, everybody, to this edition of Top Sock. I'm Jake Donnelly, and Top Sock is presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Greenlight Channel 2. Joining me right now in his all-star garb is head coach of the Tubs, Justin Hay. First things first, how was that all-star experience for you? Well, it was great. Um, you know, Moorhead did a great job putting it on. I had a great time. Uh, pretty good friends with a lot of the head coaches in the league, so to get all them together and get to spend some time with them, talk about the season, uh, talk about our teams. Uh, it was really fun. We had a great time had, and watched some good baseball. And it must have been pretty exciting for you to see Christian Slassen go out there, throw a couple of innings, and face the minimum amount of batters. Yeah, Christian threw well. He was only supposed to throw one, but we were looking for somebody to throw two. So he threw about eight pitches in the first inning, and uh, uh, we sent him back out. I think he threw 17 pitches altogether, so it was really nice to see him uh, go out there and have a good performance. Did that surprise you at all with the way he pitched last night? Uh, not really. Christian pounds the zone, uh, and that's what he did. He, he threw the ball in the zone and let people get him out, uh, get themselves out. So, yeah, I don't think he struck anybody out, but he had six quick outs. And you really can't ask for more. Now, heading back to the Tubbs' last game, that 10-8 to wild affair against the Petersburg Generals, things really did not start off well for the Tubbs. Down 7 to nothing at one point, then 8-2. to What really turned the game around for the Tubbs? Well, I challenged the guys to kind of focus start putting together some better at-bats and getting the bullpen. And they did that. They started putting some, uh, some hits back-to-back, a -back, couple walks drawn, and then the hits really started to hurt because we had men on base. And once we got some momentum, started feeling some confidence back, uh, we just started to roll and we started squaring balls up. A lot of quick at-bats early in the game for the tops. Uh, the starting pitcher, Aaron Hatch, for the Generals, he went four innings, allowed just, uh, through just 34 pitches. And my question is, do you lend any credence to the fact that players get tired? D does that have anything to do with those short at-bats? Uh, yeah, I think it's been a problem we've seen over the last week and a half for our guys. They're starting to wear down. They're not understanding how to fight that fatigue. And, you know, that's one thing we're working on. It's something that can really help them as they go back to school ball because they when on the third day of the weekend series on Sunday when they're tired or the second game of the doubleheader, uh, they'll know how to fight the fatigue and how to change their swing and battle a little bit harder, draw the walk, um, maybe even cut their swing down a little bit. So, you know, I was glad to see that our guys found that uh, approach there late in the game. And I think that it's something that we're going to have to focus more on as we move forward through the rest of the season. Now, we saw when Zach Callahan came back, came back a couple of weeks ago, kind of gave a jolt to the team. Now, we brought back Douglas Ard, another catcher for the Tops, and he kind of did the same thing. He went two for five in the game, uh, double. He actually scored the winning run by leading off the seventh inning with a double. Do you think that helps them that they were away from the team? I know it's not something they wanted to do, but do you think that helped them at all because they were a little bit more fresh? Oh, I think so. You know, they came back in fresh, and that's something that, none of the other guys have. And that's the good thing about bringing guys back. You know, they, they were here, they knew the system, they knew the organization, uh, and that's why they were our first calls back. They, they had done a good job when they were here, so there was not going to be a learning period for them when they came back, plus they're fresh. So they're, they're not worn down, and, and that helps. I mean, you can see that uh, throughout the league on guys that's starting to trickle back in. Just the difference in a guy who's played 28 games, 29 games already, versus a guy who's coming back. He's just, it's just a different feel from him in the batter's box and even on the field. Now heading into this last part of the season, the Tobs sit at 18 and 18. There's no more, there's no more all-star breaks, there's no more end of the first half of the season. What do the Tobs need to do to make that playoff push? We need to stay consistent, uh, keep our heads above water and then then rattle off probably four in a row. You know, I, that's what I'm preaching to guys right now. Let's just stay consistent, let's keep our heads above water and then let's find that role to get on somewhere before the end of the season with a little confidence. I think if we can do that, one four or five game winning streak and kind of stay where we've, we've been at, playing consistently, something we've done all year, um, you know, right, even though we've been right around the 500 level, we haven't ever really went on a losing streak. We haven't put together more than a four game winning streak, I think, and that was the first week of the season. Mm -hmm. So, but it's a, it's a challenge for these guys to stay consistent. But we have, uh, you know, and that's a good thing. We can substitute a bunch of different guys They've been able to pull us out of uh, some slumps. Our reserve players have, being fresh and bringing in Doug Ard and uh, Zach Callahan have really jolted that. Uh, and then once we get everybody, uh, another core group like we did right there at the beginning, 
Uh, some fresh arms coming in here soon. Uh, rattle off four in a row, and I think we'll have a good chance to make the playoffs. All right, and we'll see if the Tops can really make that push later on tonight as they have a chance to take two, a doubleheader against the Edenton Steamers with gates opening at 5 o'clock. First pitch scheduled for 6.05. We will have Douglas Ard uh, later on in Tops Talk, but when we come back, we will have Connie Rem from New Hope Primary Care right here on Tops Talk, presented by Thomas and Ferris on Greenlight Channel 2. And welcome back, everybody, to this edition of Tops Talk. I'm Jake Donnelly, and Tops Talk is presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Greenlight Channel 2. With me now is Connie Rem from New Hope Primary Care. And Connie, I'm driving down all the roads in Wilson. I'm seeing all the signs, I like the Walgreens and the CVSs about immunizations. What are the ones that are going on right now that New Hope Primary Care is providing? Well, Jake, immunizations are, generally speaking, age-specific. So, which brings me to a, a great point. The best thing to do is get involved with a primary care physician. You make friends with your primary care physician and allow them to guide your care, whether it's with them specifically or whether it's with specialists, whether it be an OBGYN or a neurologist or a GI doc. So I would recommend that you get a primary care physician, whether it's for you or your children, and then start working with them. Make sure they will help you keep on the schedule with immunizations. And is there any particular kind that are going on right now that maybe people should be aware of? Like I know certain times of the year that there are certain immunizations that it's better to get at certain points. Well, you always need a flu vaccination at the appropriate time. And the season varies. You know, sometimes we have a very short flu season. Sometimes we have a very long flu season. But it's always best to get a flu vaccine early because it does take some time to be fully effective. Okay, and we were talking about before we came on air mm -hmm. about some athletics, like I was a football player, baseball, basketball, right. and I did all this in school. Of course, you could play in the summer, and I played baseball in the summer, but when going back to school, I always had to get my physical. And I think it's the same thing mm -hmm. in Wilson and pretty much everywhere. And does New Hope Primary Care, do they do physicals if those the back to school physicals? Absolutely, Jake, and it's just as you said. You get all your paperwork together and you say, Oh no, I forgot the physical. <laughs> so, no problem. Call 243-0053, that's the New Hope Primary Care number, and they will set you up for a school and a sports physical. And how many physicians are at New Hope Primary Care? I know you said that you want to make friends with your physician, and that's, that's right. something I never did. <laughs> I do not like doctors. I just assume I'm always healthy, sure. which of course isn't probably the best way to go about things. Probably but not. how many uh, physicians are at New Hope Primary Care? Dr. Nadine Skinner is our medical doctor, mm -hmm. and then Becky Buckner is our physician assistant. Mm -hmm. And they are, both, they are both there all the time, essentially, to, uh, to care for you. And this is right here in Wilson, correct? That's right, 4845 Nash Street. Okay, so if I wanted to, <coughs> excuse me, if I wanted to get my sports physical mm -hmm. and I wanted to get all my vaccinations done, mm -hmm. I would go where again? You would go to New Hope Primary mm -hmm. Care, 4845 Nash Street, and the number is 243-0053. Okay, so you folks, you all heard that, right? Mm -hmm. All right, Connie, thank you for coming in this morning. I really do appreciate it. New Hope Primary Care for all your vaccinations as well as your sports physicals. I know you young guys, young gals <laughs> at home don't want to hear about that, but school is right around the corner. When we come back here on this edition of Top Sock, we will have uh, infield, or excuse me, catcher for the Wilson Tops, Douglas Ard, right here on Top Sock, presented by Thomas and Ferris on Greenlight Channel 2. And welcome back everybody to this edition of Tobs Hawk presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Greenlight Channel 2. I'm Jake Donnelly and I'm joined right now by Douglas Ard. Ard is the catcher for the Tobs and like Zach Callahan, you were on the Tobs roster at the beginning of the season, came in for literally a couple of games, then because you were conditional you were released and once the catching situation kind of got a little bit thin around here, you were brought back to the team and the first question I have to ask you, Douglas, is what were you doing in the meantime? Well, Jake, in the meantime while I was gone, I was um, doing my job at Turbyville Recreation Department in South Carolina, and I was also umpiring um, little girls, six, seven, eight-year-olds for the um, district tournament and the state tournament for South Carolina. 
So would you say that playing baseball for the Wilson Tops is a little bit more fun than what you were doing in the meantime? It's a whole lot more fun. (laughs) It's a whole lot more fun. And speaking of fun, you had yourself a pretty fun time up in Petersburg. You went two for five. You absolutely smoked the ball in four of your plate appearances with a little bit better luck. You could have been four for four with a couple of extra base hits. But as it stands, you had the big double in the seventh inning, leading off the seventh inning, and ended up coming around to score the winning run. What was it about that game where it just seemed like you were able to barrel the ball every time at the plate? I believe I just, um, after that first bunt, I just was able to see the ball very well and was settling in and saw the pitches very well and saw them straight in and just put them where they were. And for you, it seems like you do a good job of using the entire field. Every single one of your at-bats, with, of course, the exception of the bunt, it was out towards right field for a right-handed batter. Were you just taking that approach at the plate, or was it just see ball, hit ball? Mainly it was see ball, hit ball, but they were pitching me outside, so I was taking the approach to go opposite field with the pitch. And I remember when I was catching, um, if I had a good day behind the plate, when I came up to bat, I was a little bit more confident. Do you have that feeling? Because you did have a very good game behind the plate against the Generals. I do. I feel more comfortable if I have a good game behind the plate because it keeps me focused when I'm up at the plate, when I'm batting. And um, I feel like with the catching, it's a whole lot easier because you're seeing the pitches when you're catching the pitchers out there. And then when you get the pitches when you're up at bat, it's a whole lot easier. And I do have to ask one thing. When I talk about the fact that the Tobbs roster very thin on catchers, you were the only eligible catcher in that game. So did you go into the game thinking, oh man, just don't catch one off of like a foul tip so I get hurt? Were you, any of those thoughts going through your head? Coach Hay made it sure that I knew that I could not get hurt that game, and I had to make sure that I was doing everything right and staying away from getting injured during the whole game. It, staying uh, away from getting injured and also very respectable behind home plate, correct? Correct. Yeah, absolutely. And you caught a very good game um, against the Generals. You also had a great job at the plate, did a great job at the plate. When you come home on a bus like that, what are the thoughts that are going through your head? Um, I sit on the bus and uh, we usually play a game but, um, to take our mind off of things. But uh, usually if I have a game like that, I'll go through my mind, I'll go through different things that happened during the game and see what I did right and see what I did wrong and try to critique myself a little bit for the mental part of the game. And it was a little bit of a funny scene after the game because after that game was over, you guys headed into the All-Star break, so you had a couple of days off. It kind of looked like The Walking Dead outside the bus where every single guy was on his phone. Did you end up calling your folks at all after that game, kind of telling them, you know what, I had a pretty good game tonight? I did. I ended up calling them, but um, my whole family, they listen to a game on the radio, so they basically know what I did before I even call, so it's easier to talk to them after Uh, the game. Okay, well, that's good. And, uh, well, sadly, they have to listen to me tonight as the Tobs have two games against the Edenton Steamers. And this is the hardest part of this interview. It always seems to trip somebody up. So I want you to think long and hard. What is your best baseball memory? And I always point this out now to give you a little bit more time to think. John Valak talked about two home runs he hit when he was 12 years old. So when I say your best baseball memory, I mean at any point in your baseball career. What is your favorite baseball memory? My favorite baseball memory would have to be my senior year of high school. We were heading into the end of region play and we had to win a game to clinch the region title. And I came up in the top of the eighth inning because we were away. And it was in extra innings, of course, because in high school you play seven. Mm-hmm. And um, I came up with runs on first and second. And I think it was one out. And they intentionally walked the guy in front of me. And I ended up hitting a three on home run out of the center field, and we ended up winning the game 7-4. The three on home run was the one that put us ahead. And so your home run essentially clinched the region for you guys. Basically. So no one should ever intentionally walk the batter in front of you, apparently. <laughs> well, I would hope not, because I'm going to try my best to make them pay for it. And Douglas has been making teams pay for it since he came back to the tops, no longer batting 1,000 on the season, but still actually slugging above 1,000. So doing a very good job for the tops and doing a very good job here on Top Sock. Douglas, thank you for coming in this morning. Really do appreciate it. Thank you, Jay. All right, folks, when we come back, we'll wrap up this edition of Top Sock presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Greenlight Channel 2. And welcome back, everybody, to this edition of Top Sock. I'm Jake Donnelly, and Top Sock is presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Greenlight Channel 2. At this point, I'll do what I always do, and that's thank everybody who came in this morning. From Connie Rem out of New Hope Primary Care, New Hope Primary Care is the presenting sponsor 
for tonight's games against the Edenton Steamers. Remember, tonight's games, doubleheader, uh, starting at 6 o'clock with the gates opening at 5 at Slugger's Kids Night, uh, Kids Club, excuse me, as well as Tipsy Tuesday because the game from last Thursday against the Edenton Steamers got rained out. So you folks here in Wilson weren't able to enjoy our lovely drink special. So we're pushing it to tonight on Tuesday, calling it Tipsy Tuesday. So hopefully you could come out to Fleming Stadium. I'd also like to thank head coach of the Tops, Justin Hay, for coming in and also rocking that really cool uh, all-star jersey with the East and digital camo in the colors of Moorhead City, but we won't fault him for that. Now will we folks? Also, a very special thank you to Douglas Ard for coming in this morning because folks, we all know how tired that these players get, although he did have two days off because of the All-Star all break, so hopefully he got his rest in and didn't enjoy the weekend the way that I did by sitting out on the beach and apparently not applying enough sunscreen because this New England boy can't handle North Carolina beaches and my back is currently doing its best impression of a lobster. But enough about that stuff. The Tobs looking to steam up Edenton tonight as the Tobs will play host a doubleheader starting at 6.05. Gates opening at 6 o'clock. Sluggers Kids Club as well as Tipsy Tuesday presented by New Hope Primary Care. It is also Jana Lake State Farm $2 Tuesday with a bunch of $2 specials. So folks, all you have to do is bring in a little Andrew Jackson. You can get yourself a ton of stuff at the game. Hot dogs, snow cones, popcorn, as well as with that Tipsy Tuesday promotion, some really good drink specials. So one more time, folks, remember a doubleheader tonight against the Edenton Steamers with first pitch at 6.05, gates opening at 5 o'clock. This is Jake Donnelly saying thank you once again for tuning in to Top Sock presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Greenlight Channel 2, and hopefully we'll see you at Fleming.